Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to my channel that is best note tutorials and here we have completed two parts on Sylvia Plath part 1 and part 2. In first part I have discussed the biography of American writer Sylvia Plath and her first novel The Bell Jar and in second part I have included Ariel, Medusa and Crossing the Water. There is detailed explanation and in third part which is we are continuing right, right now it includes Lady Lazarus and other poetries which will complete Sylvia Plath series. So let's see what are there in this poetry. Lady Lazarus was published in the year 1965 and it is written in dramatic monologue. Monologue means one's own speech. Okay, there is no another person to ask questions or interact with Sylvia Plath. It is her own. It is her own voice. Okay, and uh, she has question and answer with she herself. I hope it's clear. Let's move ahead. The theme of the poetry. As usual, the theme of this poetry is also death, depression, pain and power. Now see, Sylvia Plath, she writes on darker side of the world, okay, which is death, depression, pain, sadness, agony, separation, etc. Okay, so here the first theme that we see is death. She wanted to commit suicide. It is because she was depressed by her relationship. She was not happy in personal life and nor in uh, career as well. She was not happy with colleagues as well. Okay, And uh, right from the beginning, patriarchal society pained her. Its power, patriarchal power to dominate women oppressed her. So, the same is reflected in her poetries as well. The disheartened speaker talks about her failed suicide attempts and gives reason for her resentment. Here, numerous suicide attempts she had done and fortunately she was saved. But this was not fortunate for Sylvia Plath because she wanted to end her life and when she was not able to do that, she thought that even in death, she does not have control. In her life, she does not have any hold that is that was fine but in her death as well she does not have power she doesn't have command that was more aching for her she also expresses her anger for those who saved her from dying it highlights the role of oppression in one's life she wanted to die and whoever saved her from the suicide attempts, she was very angry at those. It is because her life had become more, more worse than death. She wanted to die and she wanted to, for, uh, she wanted to end her sufferings. She was not happy with her father. She was not happy with husband. She was not happy in career life as well. Okay, because of colleagues. Therefore, she wanted to end it. And throughout her life, she found uh, oppressive people like father, husband and other male um, writers. Okay, so this was not a happy life for Sylvia Plath. Let's see about the poem. Woman is the speaker in the poem who talks about a male-dominated society. She openly blames her sufferings on the men for oppressing her. The poem strongly suggests that the men mentioned are the ones who evoke hope of love in her life but betray at last. The poem is symbolic of death and resurrection. It also talks society it also talks society seeks to dominate women's lives and bodies by Committing suicide, she wants to prove that her life is her own and at least upon her life, no one has control. Here, 
the woman is the speaker and uh, we know that uh, the expertise of Sylvia Plath is on confessional poetry so she confesses whatever has happened in her life she is portraying here so the woman most probably is Sylvia Plath who is talking about male dominated society okay and uh, she says that the power which controlled her was oppressing and not only that they give hope they show hope of love and uh, later on they betray maybe she is talking about her husband ted hugs okay ted hugs because um, before marrying ted hugs she was uh, she was uh, she used to love somebody okay who rejected her and then she married with ted hugs but it was also not a fruitful relationship later on after having two children ted hugs started dating someone else and that was very painful for her and uh, here the poem is symbolic of death and resurrection here she finds peace in death she wanted to end her sufferings by ending her life too and she further talks that in the society women lives women lives for men and they are just a piece of entertainment for them after entertainment they don't give importance to this particular identity of the society and uh, she wanted to commit suicide because she wanted to show that if she does not have control over life then at least she has control over her death therefore she wanted to commit suicide okay she finds herself made for pleasing others just like an object just like materialistic things even she finds herself that is woman is just an entertainment piece for male society the treatment to her by the patriarchal society male society is not at all human human they don't treat ladies as a human being they torture they they uh, they just uh, treat them as a material okay who, who does not have feeling who does not have any emotion with that particular thing so she is compare she is comparing herself with a materialistic thing she compare herself to a jewish person in nazi uh, occupied germany nazi occupied germany see the torture that nazi people did to jewish people she feels the same she is comparing herself to a victim of nazi torture okay she finds herself as a jewish jewish uh, person who was tortured by nazi under the leadership of adolf hitler she calls she calls her skin a nazi lampshade and her face a jew linen here these both the things are feminine things okay lampshade and linen the former is a reference to an urban legend that nazis made lampshades from the skin of jewish people murdered in the holocaust while this linen refers to the cloth used to wrap the biblical lazarus in his tomb these are both domestic items and these are associated with typical conception of femininity so she finds herself that she was tortured by male member just like nazi tortured jewish people during their regime the comparison with holocaust became controversial as it expresses the extent of oppression according to the society the torture that nazi people did was extreme but not the torture that society does to a lady it cannot be compared according to society people almost everywhere in the poem the speaker shows that she is treated as an object as an object as an object and not as a human being ladies are just for entertainment okay whenever they require they use it and after that 
they keep it and there is no emotional attachment with that this metaphor is only reduces the speaker to someone else valuable item someone else valuable item like a gold but also infantilizes her by making this valuable object a baby here they someone else valuable thing women ladies are valuable thing but but the women are being called as baby it shows that they are their mindset is very childish they are not able to take decision therefore they are dependent upon uh, the male members of the family okay ladies are not able to take decisions they are not intelligent they are not perfect for decision making therefore it is male member who does it for them women often loses self respect when the speaker's body is put on display for others her body is used for the benefit entertainment of other people here the body of women should be respected the one who married her should respect should respect at any cost but here she is being treated just like an object and that is troublesome for silvia plath okay she met with numerous uh, male members and uh, there were people who robbed of the identity self respect honor of her therefore she it had become indispensable to write this poetry for her the speaker describes her suffering as being a spectacle for the for those who criticizes here she wanted to show these people who are criticizing her the view point of silvia plath or a lady okay how much she suffers in her life that is what silvia plath wanted these criticizers to understand people condemn the theme of the macabre here we find the deadly experience of silvia plath is being objectified that is just object for the people okay she is not a human being and she and the pains are just objects for society sexual language is used in the poem to show how the body of the speaker has just has become just like a corpse here as just like a dead body even she has become cold and feeling less there is no emotional attachment with anything after a per person is considered as dead they don't have any relationship isn't it they are taken for burial ceremony so here also she is away from all the attachments with society and she uses sexual language as well in order to show that even ladies should be bolder okay she, they should also be just like men she does not want to say anything on her life on her life's maximum as her life's maximum portion is covered by patriarchal torture she doesn't want to remember the torture that she received from male counterpart in her life be it father be it colleagues be it husband she does not want to remember that several men ruined her life and the same is reflected in the poem several men lecturer doctor there were other people also um, colleagues in the literary field okay husband and father they are already there so altogether it was a disastrous experience for silvia plath which is reflected in the poetry the speaker frequently uses apostrophe this is literary device where uh, direct reference is there okay like if you are calling moon you will call it directly direct addressing of some to some figure directly addressing various figures like god lucifer doctor and more general enemy so there are lots of apostrophe which silvia plath uses in her poetry she refers them all her 
which in german means sir indicating that they are all men so sir represents entire male member of the society plat expresses her grievances that she received from her father who was of german descent see she had lots and lots of problem that she received from her german father okay these all men represent the different kinds of male authority figures in the in her life these are religious figures doctors psychologists and father who all entrapped her see it is not only that religious people had tortured her but from male member from all the fields be it priests pope okay be it doctors be it psychologists or father or husband everyone had destroy destroyed the life of silvia plath okay everybody had destroyed the life of silvia plath she hates being saved from her suicide attempts and she considers destroying life is her choice she thinks that when her life was not full of joy and happiness then at least death will be how it is because it will put an end to all her sufferings she would suffer she had suffered a lot from husband because of infidelity okay because of uh, competition in literary field because of oppression of father all right so there are so many things because of which silvia plath had um survived okay through which she had survived now she wants to end it because she is tired of fighting with herself the speaker intends to destroy the men who have forced her to stay alive and thus will finally be able to die as she wants she wants to destroy all the men who saved her because they have not saved her for giving a new life to silvia plath but to continue their operation the, to continue their operation they have saved silvia plath therefore he she does not like even though she was saved by male members despite the tangible and almost frightening rage found in this revenge fantasy that ends the poem she she is full of revenge she is revengeful okay who wants to take revenge upon all these men and she is so much in rage she is so much angry at the discrimination that society did towards women she could only think of taking revenge before it's a revenge fantasy she wants to take revenge practical revenge rather than taking revenge in fantasy in imagination she wants to practicalize her revenge right now finally she gives up and condemns the possibility of women's liberation in the patriarchal society or the world here she gives up she is tired now tired of fighting with male well rooted male patriarch well rooted patriarch patriarchal world in the society she gives up she becomes tired of this present system of patriarchal society she she will ultimately be able to die nine times like a cat and has just completed her third death here she in the poetry she dies nine times and with cat it just like a cat okay she dies once in each decade decade means 10 years in 10 years she dies nine times she addresses the crowd directly showing them she remains a uh, she remains a skin and bone unchanged from who she was before here she is so much angry at the crowd that she says she addresses the crowd directly and shows them that she is skin and bone the remaining 
of skin and bone which is unchanged it means that she is the one who was victimized and she is the same who committed suicide who wanted to end her life the first death occurred when she was 10 accidentally the second death was intentional she did not mean to return from it instead she was as shut as seashell until she was called back by people who then picked the worms off her corpse she does not specifically identify now either death or good here actually it is not a real death okay but every time the torture that she received the blows that she emotional blows that she received from male society is considered to be death okay she imagines that even after her death nobody is going to give importance to corpse her rights okay last rights are not going to be done properly by male in male patriarchal society therefore it will be unattended that is why this worms are mentioned she does not specifically identify either either death or good this is because she is talking about emotional death okay her breaking of heart when she surrendered when she attempted to suicide okay that was also that also meant that she was dead which is mentioned here i hope i was able to make it clear to you all she believes that dying is an art like everything else and that she does it very well each time it feels real and is easy for her now this is to show that she is habituated now nine times she had tried to commit suicide and it has become so much easy for her she tries if she is saved then she becomes angry it is to show that how much she was willing to end her life okay it is an art okay she has specialized in this art by trying it numerous times what is difficult is the dramatic comeback the return to the same place and body here when she was saved she is talking about that situation whenever she was saved then it was dramatic comeback okay she had to come back to life again in same place in same body had place changed and body also changed then it would have been another birth for her but that did not happen she was in same place with same people who tortured her therefore it is mentioned here it was dramatic comeback occurring occurring as it does in broad daylight before a crowd's cry a miracle here occurring as it does in broad daylight before a crowd's cry a miracle here what we get to understand is that people thought that she was dead but she was saved so each time it happened and it was a miracle which crowd cried after saving sylvia plath or the speaker to be in safer side you can write the speaker she believes people should be to view her scars hear her heart or receive a word touch blood hair or clothes from her here she wanted people to listen to her ache see her scars okay and receive a word she wanted them to touch she wanted to touch in a sense she wanted support from this society she wanted she wanted society to see her scar, scars okay where she is wounded but they could not do that just saving a life was important for them but not um, attending the wounds that was emotional in the final stanzas the she addresses the listeners as her doctor and her enemy sneering that she is his crowning achievement a pure gold baby here she is referring to doctor and enemy her enemy she is referring to her relatives 
okay by saying her enemy because they have left no stone unturned to give her pain give her uh, isolation okay give her utter separation from love and attachment she does not understand underestimate his concern but is bothered by now he picks through her assage here c is considering that she is already gone now and they are picking up from the asses there is only remnant this is the asses are the only remnants of sylvia blood's body and by this the doctors and the enemy will be concerned she insisted there is nothing there but soap a wedding ring and a gold filling here soap a wedding ring and a gold filling okay she warns her doctor her lucifer to beware of her because she is going to rise out of the ass and eat men like air here the she her body is already destroyed destroyed and she has become asses because of the doctors and enemy okay now she is going to take revenge upon these men by taking another birth by resurrecting herself by taking another birth she is going to take revenge of all the torture that she had received for being a victim of all these tortures she is going to take revenge upon these people by this the poetry ends and we get to see that her torture okay after that we see the revengeful mindset of sylvia plath by this we have completed the poetry we will move to another one i hope it's clear to everyone now we will move towards another book of sylvia plath that is the letters the letter of sylvia plath this was published in the year 1940 to 1950 let's go through the book before starting the poetry sylvia plath is renowned as one of the 20th century's most influential poet in is beyond dispute this remarkable collection edited edition of sylvia plath's letters plath's letter is a work of immense scholarship and care it presents a comprehensive and historically accurate texts of the known and extant letters which she wrote to over 120 correspondents including her husband the edition reproduces reproduces previously unknown photographs and a gathering of plath's own elegant line drawing taking taken from the letters she sent to her family friends and family offering the reader generous insight into the life of one of our most significant poets so here we know that through letters we can understand people's emotion and bonding to whom they are writing plath was also a writer of 20th century who has written numerous letters to correspondences acquaintances okay and through these letters we get to understand her uh, condition of mind and her emotional and mental condition here we will begin with winter trees winter trees was published after the death of sylvia plath and it is a collection of poetry which was published by her husband ted hugs along with crossing the water it provides the reminder of the poems that plath had written during her state of elevated creativity prior to her suicide these poems were written at the last stage of sylvia plath's life because at that time she was her mind was working very uh, actively it is because she wanted more things from the society but she did not receive therefore it was a response to that particular situation about the book 
Winter Trees consists of poems written in the nine months before Sylvia Plath's death. Ted Huggs, in his opinion, opening note, writes that the poems in this volume are all out of the batch from which the aerial poems were more or less arbitrarily chosen. Most of our poetry, poetries are unpolished. Only Ariel is her flawless work. Rest of the poems require refinement. Through them, we read hints of Plath's process, her fierce desire to convey their aches, their anger, as well as their moments of pathos. Here, we get to see that Winter Tree was published after the death of Sylvia Plath by her husband and he says that Ariel was most refined poetry of Sylvia Plath but other poetry requires refinement and uh, Ariel poetry we have already done and uh, there also we find that uh, Sylvia Plath wanted to be like men so that she can dominate, she can avoid um, the things which are assigned to a lady in the society. Okay. So, right now, we will move towards Winter Trees. Let's see the summary of the poetry. In Winter Trees, Sylvia Plath compares herself with a winter tree. She used third-person narrative for the same purpose. For the same purpose means comparing, for comparing herself with a winter tree. You need to understand this very well, okay? The poet delves into Plath's innermost thoughts, which is the main characteristic of the innate confession, uh, confessional literary movement. Confessional means confessing ones, the confessing things that happened in her life, in one's life. So Sylvia Plath was writing whatever had she experienced. It also fulfills the confessional literary movement characteristic of extreme moments of individual experiences, the psyche, personal trauma and taboo matters like, such as abortion. So here, in order to consider this work as confessional literary um, work, we need to see whether it, it, is, it is appropriate according to the characteristic of confessional poetry or not. And it is correct because Whatever has happened, whatever raw and crude has happened to Sylvia Plath, she is writing in her poetries, be it about her relationship with a husband or abortion or anything else. Okay, so so candidly she has written and that is why it is confessional uh, literary movements, one of the works. The title shows Sylvia Plath's loneliness, despair and pessimistic outlook. Loneliness because even though she was married and had children, she was not taken warmly by these relationships. She was very much in despair and she had um, grown pessimistic. It is because she did not find any optimism in and around her. All right? At very early age, her father died. All right, then she had become mad. All right, for that she went to asylum. After that, she went to uh, approach for love acceptance that was denied by one of the colleagues. And then she came to Ted Hugs. So all these things made her pessimistic. And very importantly, the betrayal of Ted Hugs, who was in a relationship with another lady. As winter symbolizes this hopelessness and allude to the desolate, dready landscape of Devon where Sylvia Plath lived before discovering Ted's affair. Winter, it also symbolizes death. Okay, it also symbolizes death because winter is often compared with the last season of human life, old age. And old age is associated with death. Okay, so in during old age, people become hopeless. But... Her last stage, Sylvia Plath's last state, last stage has arrived and it is so desolate, dready and full of hopelessness. The second part of the title, Trees, is what Sylvia Plath is jealous of. 
Forests are a refuge from danger, home of love and maternity. Symbolizing ring doves. Ring doves are pigeon, okay. Rooted, emotionless, free and completely contrary to women. Here, Sylvia Plath wanted to be like for forest because it is a refuse from danger because male members they hardly fearful of anything okay and they are contrary to women these things are contrary to women they are purer and do not conduct the act that women do she is talking about male member they are purer because they don't do abortion and butchery all right but this is sarcastic things because they do more heinous crime than these minor crimes because a lady cannot do abortion by herself because unless and until there is association of somebody else and uh, Therefore, sarcastically, she says that they are purer. Male members are purer, and they because they do not conduct abortion and butchery. They are. This may avert to Sylvia Plath having an abortion and the emotional toll it took on her. See, it's so much upset because of her abortion, and during that period, she she was hurt, and she mentions the same situation out here that male members they don't have to undergo abortion and therefore it is not traumatic for them but ladies they have to because of the pain that male members give to ladies in the society ted's affair is also a prominent source of despair throughout the poem ring on ring a series of weddings hints literally at three rings and this history that each ring holds or ironically at the union of wedding and rings having ring after ring rings break the union referring to unfaithfulness of bigamy here we get to see by these lines sylvia plath wanted to say that ring after ring one ring was provided by one lady during the marriage when somebody is giving another one then what is happening the first one is not having any value so ring after ring okay male members they wear ring after ring but they are not questioned right they are not questioned for being unfaithful and promoting bigamy but it is sylvia plath ladies okay sylvia plath is representing ladies who suffers throughout her life the first sentence describes the first sentence describes a wet day at dawn wet day at dawn wet describes water as an element associated with women love or the color blue this may ver verify that the poem is in fact about sylvia plath not just winter trees along with winter trees there are other things which are associated with it like marshy land wet land okay wet land wet is the color of water and blue symbolizes warmth of women this is further verified as the poem personifies trees as they seed as they seed or are testing the winds personification is also seen because it is say that trees as they seed as they uh, seed means to it is related to reproduction okay reproduction giving uh, being engaged in having a baby with ladies in the closing stanza there is ambiguity coming from the use of pronouns in they are ladas who are they and in who are these petas who is the who the pronouns who and the question mark emphasizes this ambiguity here whom she is referring exactly it is not clear it is ambiguous it is not clear because there are so many people who are referred 
who had destroyed Sylvia Plath's life. Okay, let's see who all were there. Is Plath pointing out that she is the subject or are the trees? According to Greek mythology, the god Zeus, in the form of a swan, seduces or rapes Leda. So, is Sylvia Plath talking about these um, Ledas? Or swan that is not clear. Would Sylvia Plath be talking about trees in this instance or herself? Sylvia in confessional literature illustrates personal trauma. It is said that Plath was raped by an odd older man, but she still might not be referring to herself. So here when Ledas are mentioned, okay, God, God of Jews, then is it he who had raped Sylvia Plath or whom she is mentioning? That is not clear. Sylvia Plath could also be refer referring to the dutiful Pietas, winter trees being plagued by the savagery of mankind. Confessional literature usually has a rhythm. Although Sylvia Plath does not have a meter or clear rhythm, there is an alliteration of in which adds to the flow and rhythm of the piece. Overall, this poem is clearly part of confessional literary movement because it illustrates Sylvia Plath's individual traumatic experiences. So here we get to see that Sylvia Plath compares herself to winter trees which has become withered now and it has reached to the last stage it has lacked emotion it is not able to safeguard anymore anyone she because she has become emotionless just like a naked winter tree even she has become naked because there is no emotion of a lady in her and uh, that is what it is mentioned because numerous times she had to put her self-respect at stake because of male members so that is what we get to see here. Now we will move towards letter home. Letter home was a collection of letters written by Sylvia Plath to her family between her years at college in 1950 and her death and her death at the age of 30. Sylvia's mother Aurelia Scover Plath edited the letters and the collection was published by Harper and Raw and Faber and Faber in United States in 1975. Letters Home represents Sylvia Plath's correspondence from her time at Smith College in the early 50s through her meeting with, with and subsequent marriage to the poet Ted Hugs up to her death in February 1963. The letters are addressed mainly to her mother. She had an extremely close and confiding relationship but there are also some to her brother Warren and her benefactress Mrs. Poutry, Prouty. So here we find through letters, Sylvia wanted to convey her feelings to mother, to husband and to her brother along with benefactress. And after the publication of these letters, we get to understand her association with mother and other people in her life. Plath's energy, enthusiasm and her passionate tackling of life burst onto these pages provides us with a vivid and intimate portrait of a woman who has come to be regarded as one of the greatest of 20th century poets. Here we find she received emotional blows and she survived from that. But the wound it caused was reflected in letters and through these letters we find how much sufferings she had to undergo. 
and therefore her ached heart when received the help of words then these wonderful letters were created in addition to her capacity for domestic and writerly happiness here she was happy to write and uh, within a day she used to write more than 1500 words however these letters also hint at plath's potential for deep despair which reached its crisis when she holed up in a london flat for the terrible winter of 1963 here she had confided herself in london flat in the winter of 1963 this was more disastrous situation of sylvia plath's life where no one was there to help her out finally sylvia plath committed suicide because she found there is no scope in living because husband was also in relationship with somebody else and she did not find that any reason to any reason for which she should continue living even though she was a great student great writer great daughter but she could not be a great wife for dead hugs according to sylvia plath and therefore she committed suicide because her dead hugs had affair with someone else so by this we have completed all three videos on Sylvia Plath. We will come with some more explanation. Till then, be with us and go through our previous videos for revision. Thank you friends. Take care and all the best.